I was actually in this location when we got a tweet from the governor saying, go home. Here we are, almost a year later, still shut down. In some ways, I think most people didn't realize how important live music is until it was taken away. Right when this pandemic hit, a lot of us who have been touring for years went from 100 to zero. I haven't taken a vacation, and I've been touring for about 15 years. This is the longest I've ever been at home, like ever. My suitcases are just sitting in the corner. Like my road cases for my gear are collecting dust. What's going on right now? I feel like live music was always like that outlet for us. I find myself reminiscing about my favorite concerts now when I'm at home, like making breakfast for my kids. I'll be thinking about how the seats at the Forum are so small up against each other that my knees had bruises on them from dancing and hitting the seat in front of me, but I'll miss it. The benefits of going to a concert in hard times or in good times, I can always equate to the feeling you get when you go to like the show of the year for you personally, whatever that show is, that moment, and you walk out with this feeling of total euphoria. It's a hard thing for the fans and also for the musicians to be isolated like this. Both musicians and producers and also the listeners and fans just had to totally pivot in how they were either making or consuming music. We had our stages taken away from us and we just had to create a new stage. And a lot of times that new stage was social media. Touring, sometimes you may hit A markets, B markets, or you might just do a college tour. You might do these certain things and certain people can't come to these events. So with the streaming, it's allowing you to reach all of your fans at the same time. It was in the works way before. It was a moment of, you know, like we at home. It was a bonding experience and it was birth in the pandemic. It's never happened before in this particular way. So I think a live performance is different than the experience that we're giving the audience. I think we're giving them a virtual experience. Me and Tim tried this with a live audience and we had fun, but it was nothing like what has happened on the digital platform. At that time, we were going through a place of destruction and I know music is a place of healing. And that's what me and Swiss was bringing. We was bringing love and healing. Two brothers really breaking down barriers in the tech space. We already are on our phones and computers half of the day. The phones was a way to transmit that love throughout the universe. What I saw happening which I wasn't thrilled about was artists just going on Instagram Live, putting their phone on a little tripod and not getting great sounding audio. It was wonderful for the fans. It was great that they could do that, but it wasn't the best experience. I think live streaming is here to stay. When it comes to the internet, you can have 5 million followers and your audio is trash, or you can have 5,000 followers and you have amazing video and audio. Anyone I know that I'm attached to, I make sure I do whatever I can to make them sound great. If we shoot the content and I mix it, we're gonna master it for IG. While we've really relied on these streaming platforms and live streaming platforms, it's forced artists and creators to step up their game. Our collaboration with Versus came about with some calls from friends of ours, as most things do. I was introduced to Little John, and John said, Swiss Beats wants to reach out to you because they're working on this really cool thing on IG right now. And I'm like, well, what is it? He's like, well, you got to get that information from him. We do get calls like this from time to time. So we knew it was something big brewing, but we never dreamt it was going to be for the scale of what it is. Lo and behold, a couple of minutes later, I get a call from Swiss Beats and he's like, hey, I need help. We're doing this really big thing on Instagram right now and we can't get the audio right. Me and Tim are sound guys. We're producers, we're musicians. So once it became serious and those lineups became bigger, we started caring about the sound, especially when other artists that were supposed to be on the platform declined because of the sound. This is what made the Roland partnership so special because a lot of people was coming at us with a lot of ideas, but Roland just came with like the right idea. The perfect idea. <laughs> yeah, gotta have a Roland kit. Roland is known as a keyboard and drum synthesizer manufacturing company, but they have a whole Pro AV division. It's a natural path for us. It's a natural workflow for us to want to take the tools that we have and put those in the hands of creators to improve their workflow. That's why we exist. Roland came out with their Go series of portable audio interfaces that you're able to plug into your phone and record audio directly the Go Live Cast allows you to interact with fans, see comments on your phone during a live stream, throw PNGs on where you used to have to dive into Adobe for all of that. It's in the palm of your hand again. And it's not just for your newbie who 
might not be deep into the audio video world. We were on tour recording vocals into the Go Mixer Pro that was then used for scratch vocals and we heard it and it was so good that we just used it on the record. True story. Richard Weiss, who's a dear friend of mine, has been hosting these fundraisers from his kitchen and they're called RW Corn Tunes. He's raised $17 million for charities on Zooms. A lot of them co-hosted with Clive Davis. Jimmy Jam's a part of it. We we're about 15 in and he said, pack your stuff up, we're going to the Hollywood Bowl. So it was Richard, his daughter, the mayor, four horn players from the Philharmonic, and Kenny Loggins. And we were able to get almost every artist that was supposed to play the bowl that year to hop on the broadcast and virtually play the Hollywood Bowl. I brought like a Roland switcher that's amazing. It has a little mixer in it and a couple cameras and a laptop. And we produced some of the biggest names in entertainment from the Hollywood Bowl on Zoom. They can tell when you use the Roland kit, it matters like, see? Somebody didn't use the rolling kit. Yeah. We had to start from the bottom to get to where we are today. We grew something in front of people from the ground up. It was born here, but it lives on forever. People are kind of starting to learn about the Go Mixer series and everything. People just noticed that like the verses were better or worse, but didn't know how or why, but now the cat's out of the bag. And guess what? I'm just gonna plug this one cable into my phone and now I have perfect audio. Depending on what size pants, you can put it in a cargo pocket and have a full direct mix to your live stream feed. The very next Go Mixer that we're seeing today now, just released, is a byproduct of some of the changes, improvements that artists and creators want from the one that was out at the beginning of the pandemic. And we've been able to update and already re-release with some changes in just that short span of time. Across the board, it's not an entry level thing. It's not just for the professional, but the underlying common denominator is anyone can use it.